Hi. When given a function, we're often asked to find the inverse of that function. Let's start with an example to see what I mean. Suppose you are filling a pool using a garden hose. The volume of water in gallons after t hours of filling the pool is given by b of t equals 700 t plus 200. What does the inverse of this function tell you? What is the inverse of this function? Let's, let's, let's think about this problem. If v of t tells you how much water is in the pool after t hours, then its inverse, which I'll call t of v, tells you how much time it takes to fill the pool to v gallons. Now it's time to see a plot. So here we have a plot of v of t, where time is on the horizontal axis and gallons is on the vertical axis. If we find the inverse function, the relationship between time and gallons essentially stays the same. What happens, what changes, is that this is flipped over. And now we have time on the vertical axis and gallons on the horizontal axis. So I give you a, vo a volume and it outputs time. Now let's get just a little bit more rigorous and solve this problem algebraically. To find the inverse algebraically, I like to start like so, and then I'll replace the v of t with a v, just for volume, equals 700 t plus 200. And now I will solve for t. And so this is going to become v minus 200 equals 700 t, and now it's v over 700 minus, what's 200 divided by 700? It's minus 2 sevenths is equal to t. And so finally, t of v is equal to v over 700 minus 2 sevenths. Well, that was great. That problem wasn't hard at all. Let's go ahead and try another example and see what happens. Suppose you are standing on a bridge that is 60 meters above sea level. You toss a ball into the air. If t is the time in seconds after we toss the ball, then the height at time t is approximately h of t equals minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 60. What does the inverse of this function tell you? What is the inverse of this function? So if h of t tells me how high a ball is after t seconds, then the inverse of this function is going to tell me the time, so it's t of h, when the ball is at height h. Let's plot this too. So here we have a plot of h of t. Time is put in and the height of the ball is out. And so this is when you're standing on the bridge and you throw the ball up in the air and then it comes back and it, it misses the bridge and goes down into the water. So what does the inverse look like? Well, the inverse the relationship between time and height is the same. The only thing that changes is what's the input. And so we have to flip this over the line y equals x. Here we go. I just flipped it. And now what's going to happen is time goes on the vertical axis and height goes on the horizontal axis. But there's a problem. And I think you can see what it is. This is not a function. For example, for this height right here, there are two times when the function is at this height. That's a single input with two outputs. We can't have a single input with two outputs and still be a function. So, so what are we going to do about this? Well, we have a trick. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the domain of the function so that on that domain, not only does every input have a single output, but every output also has a single input. This is, allow, this is going to allow us to find the inverse on this restricted domain. Let's do it. While we cannot find an inverse of h of t on the entire domain, what we can do is restrict the domain. So check this out. If I just restrict the domain, to this much, then what I can do is I can take the inverse of this part of the function 
like so. And now, put time up here and height here, this is a function. Likewise, I can restrict the domain the other way too and be left with this part of the function. And now I can take the inverse by flipping it over to the line y equals x. There we go. And now this is time. This is height. Now let's just get a little bit more rigorous and do it algebraically. So here we have our function h of t gives, uh, gives height in terms of time. It equals minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 60. To find the inverse, we set h equal to minus 5t squared plus 30t plus 60. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is divide everything by negative 5. So I have h over minus 5 is equal to t squared minus 6t minus 12. Now I'm going to add uh, h over 5 to both sides so I get 0 equals t squared minus 6t minus 12 plus h over 5. Now what I'm going to do is use the quadratic formula. Remember this is the constant term by the way. So the quadratic formula says that t is equal to 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times a is 1 times negative 12 plus h over 5 all over 2. Now we can divide every term in the numerator by 2 so we get t is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 12 minus h over 5 and so t is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 21 minus h over 5. At this point what we want to do is just write t of h equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 21 minus h over 5 and call it a day. There's only one problem with this this is not a function. There are two output values. So now let's back up to when t equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 21 minus h over 5. Looking at the plot again and taking it as a given that this curve reaches its maximum value when t equals 3 we th see that somehow we should split the domain this way and this way. So let's look at what happens. So if t is in uh, the interval containing 3 that goes to infinity, t is always positive. It's in this interval, okay? And t of h then has to equal 3 plus the square root of 21 minus h over 5. On the other hand, if t is in negative infinity to 3, that's the interval going to negative infinity and containing 3, then t can be negative and t of h is equal to 3 minus the square root of 21 uh, minus h over 5. As we've seen, finding the inverse of a function isn't always easy. First of all, you have to solve an equation and solving equations can be hard. Second of all, even if you start with a function, the inverse of that function might not be a function. We have a special name for functions when the inverse is a function. Those functions are called 1, 2, 1. This means that not only for every input there's exactly one output, but for every output there's exactly one input. You may have seen this before as being said it passes the vertical line test to be a function and passes the horizontal line test so that its inverse is also a function. If the function's not one to one, then you have to restrict the domain if you want to find an inverse function. I know all this can be confusing, but we're going to make it through this. Let's go do some math.